Hello everyone, welcome back to 3 Deviations. So in the last video we covered a substitution rule example and now we're going to cover one final indefinite substitution. And this is going to be our hardest yet and you'll see why in a second. It's going to be a more complicated integral, something that we might evaluate in a different way if we were in a Calculus 2 class, but we're in a we're, we're in Calculus 1, we're going to be using our use substitution. This is really an example to allow us to fully understand how substitution works to the fullest extent. Now if we remember the chain rule, the chain rule is allowed to be done twice. We can do the chain rule as many times as we need to use the chain rule so we can differentiate our function. And the use substitution is no different. We can take multiple substitutions of one integral if our first substitution isn't enough, well then we do another substitution. And that's the way it works. We can keep on going until we have an integral that roughly matches our table. So we'll, we'll see how to do that in this example. So this is going to be a little bit tougher. As always, I recommend that you pause the video, try to solve it on your own, and then I'll give an explanation afterwards. So as you can see, we got the text a little bit smaller just because of the amount of stuff we need to do for this integral. So we're going to integrate sine to the fourth of 5x times cosine of 5x dx. All right. Immediately what I see is I see a sine and I see a cosine. We know that the cosine is the derivative of sine, but then we've got this argument here in our trig functions. And then we've also got the sine raised to the fourth power. So we know that this is going to be a little bit trickier. So I think what the best thing to do is to always set the inner function equal to u. So we have u, and we'll set that equal to 5x. Then du is going to be reduced to 5dx. Right, so we can set that up in our bracket. u is going to be equal to 5x. du is going to be equal to 5 times dx. Now we need to manipulate because we do not have a 5 factor in here outside of our argument, so we need to move that outside and add that to our du. So then we get 1 fifth du is equal to dx. All right, now let's substitute this into our integral and see what it looks like. All right, now we've got 1 fifth times the integral of sine to the fourth of u times the cosine of u du. Now, I would hope that you would see another substitution coming because now here we have a sine and we have a cosine, no problem in the argument, and we know cosine is the derivative of sine, we've got sine to the power of four. You should be able to do this substitution now in your head, um, but I will continue to uh, do it with the brackets so that we can make sure we know what we're doing. So I'm gonna set our new substitution variable equal to v. So we're gonna change from u to v. So we're gonna set sine of u equal to v. And what should be mentioned is that um, sine to the fourth, fourth of theta is equal to sine of theta to the fourth. So we can um, evaluate it as if it were sine to the fourth of theta. So we do have a power there. All right, and that, that means that um, the cosine of u is going to be equal to dv. Now when I put that in my bracket, no, v is equal to sine of u, dv is equal to cosine of u, du, d, um, du there. Um, we actually don't need to do any manipulation, and we're going to be given a really nice integral of one-fifth times the integral of v to the fourth, du, uh, dv, sorry, put a dv there. Um, and we can rewrite that as one over twenty-fifth v to the fifth. That's the reverse power rule. Pretty easy stuff that we're doing there. So now that we've finished with our integrand, now we have a value. Now we need. Now we just need to do a lot of back substitution. So let's go back to u first. So u is equal to, um, or v is equal to the sine of u. So we just um, rewrite that as one over twenty fifth sine to the fifth of u. All right. Now we just need to back substitute in for x. That's easy as well. That's just adding in the arguments. That gives us 1 25th sine to the fifth of x, or sine to the fifth of 5x. Of course, what would a proper 
um, substitution answer B without a constant of integration. Always add that plus C. All right, so now we have our final answer for a double substitution, extra hard substitution problem. Look out for that on your Calc 1 finals. And that is it for our indefinite substitution. So now that you know how to take these integrals, I would hope that you'd go to the daily integral playlist um, and try to see if you can solve any of those guys. Those are a little bit harder than the ones we're doing here, except for this one, which is harder. Um, so I, I urge you to go check that out and see if you can solve it. And if not, then watch the video. All right, in the next video of Three Deviations, we're gonna be moving on and we're gonna start talking about how to tackle a U substitution integral definitely. So when we're solving for a numerical answer, not a function answer. And it's gonna have a little bit of a curve to it. So we'll see that later. Thank you for watching. We'll see you guys to talk about some definite integration with the U substitution method. Thank you.